questions about white squirrels, like who brought them to Olney and when did they get there? Well, Nick, the first white squirrel in the area was seen by George W. Ridgely. He was hunting in 1899 and seen the white squirrels playing near the farm in summer. Yes, then after he unsuccessfully tried to capture them, he and he, him, he and his neighbor built a cage to capture them. After they got them, they brought some of them to Olney in 1902. Good morning, this is Illinois History News, and I'm John, this is Nick. Today there have been some questions about white squirrels, like who brought them to Olney and when did they get there? Well, Nick, the first white squirrel in the area was seen by George W. Ridgely. He was hunting in 1899 and seen the white squirrel playing near his farm and center. Yes, then he unsuccessfully tried to capture them, him and his neighbor, built a cage to capture them. After, then after they got them, they brought some of them to Olney in 1902. Have a good day. Catch you on the flip side. Music boy. <laughs> and faded. Good morning, I'm Nick, and this is Dalton. Today we're telling you about Miracle Whip and who brought it to, or who made it in Salem, Illinois. Charles Chapman and Max Crossett first made it in Salem. It was made by Max Crossett's Cafe on 100 North Washington Street in Salem. It was first used for just a cheap substitute for mayo, but then they decided to name it the Max Crossett's Extra Fine Salad Dressing. For people who, are, who have dressing on their salad and to enjoy it. See you later. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Illinois History News. I'm Ethan. I'm Alicia. Did you know that the Heath Bar was created in Robertson, Illinois? They opened their doors on January 7, 1914. It was created by the Heath brothers Bay Bayard and Everett and their father. They created the Heath Bar to see in their candy store. You can visit their museum on 125 Court Street in Robertson, Illinois. Welcome to Illinois History News. I'm Evan. Kelsey. Um, Arthur and Elizabeth Martin just purchased a 2008 acre farm five miles west of Arcola. They decided to devote seven acres of the farm to flower gardens, rock formations, and a summer cottage. Special events are planned each weekend throughout the entire summer and fall. A few of the events planned are the quilt show and auctions, kids fest, dog days, bluegrass music, and the wine and cheese festival. Daily activities include kayaking, horse trail rides, buggy rides, the haunted cave, and a pet museum. We hope you come out sometime and enjoy these gardens and activities. This is Tristan, and welcome to Illinois History News. Tonight's story takes place at the world's largest cross. The cross is also known as the Cross at the Crossroads. People passing through Effingham, Illinois cannot miss this landmark towering above the flat farmland that surrounds it. The cross stands 198 feet tall and 113 feet wide. It is constructed out of steel and cement. 
The cross can withstand winds up to 145 miles per hour, and the estimated cost to build range somewhere in the into the multi millions. Seasonal events are held at the cross. Corvettes, the cross, and the blessing of the bikes are two of the seasonal events held at the cross. Welcome Center and Chapel, also located under the cross, are monuments for each of the Ten Commandments. At night, this large cross is lit up at night, making it even more noticeable. It is estimated that 20 million people drive past the cross every year. For visitors who want to visit the cross at the crossroads, Welcome Center and Chapel, it is located at the West Nag Road in Effingham, Illinois. Signs are posted at I-70 exit 159. There is no fee to visit this inspirational place, but they can, but they accept donations to help with upkeep and utility bills. I wonder how the view is up there. Well, I guess we'll never know because there's no way to look out, at, out the top. Well, that's it for now, and thanks for watching the Illinois History News. See you. <laughs> Lots of bagels, rides, a concert starring famous country singer David Nail, and a contest to see who will be crowned this bagel fest. The carnival will open July 18th from 1 p.m. to midnight. Saturday, July 19th is when David Nail will perform on the main stage. Concert tickets will be going on sale May 1st. $15 for reserved tickets and $10 for lawn seating. Also, there is a parade in the afternoon during all the festivities. There will also be a softball tournament. This event will take place on July 17th, 18th, and 19th in Mattoon, Illinois. It is free admission, so we hope to see you there. Good. Hello and welcome to Illinois History News. I'm Bodie. And I'm Carla, reporting from the Little Landlock town of Sandoris, Illinois. That's right, the Land Lover Sea Museum is located in Sidoris, but why would a sea museum be located in a landlocked town? Well, that's because the owner, Charles Lazar, grew up in the area and went to college at the University of Illinois. He built the museum in 1878 to store all of the ship models he has made. You can visit the museum anytime from May 1st through November 30th. But during the winter, you can still visit, but you have to make an appointment. Welcome to Illinois History News. Hello, we are here to tell you about the world's largest Lincoln statue. The statue is located in Ashmore, Illinois. It stands 72 feet tall and towers over the trees. The statue was built to celebrate the 110th anniversary for the Lincoln-Douglas debate in Charleston, Illinois. The statue was originally built in Minnesota in 1968. It didn't get put into Ashmore until 1978 and it was late for the Lincoln-Douglas anniversary. The statue stood in the middle of a field for many years. When they moved Lincoln out of the field, they found him with many bullet holes in his on his body and his face. They also discovered that his index finger was blown off. The statue is known as the world's tallest and most ugly Lincoln statue ever built. The campground, clo the campground Lincoln stands in was closed in 1996. In 2002, Kirch Company bought the statue and they attached his finger and patched the bullet holes. Why not go see the world's tallest and ugliest Lincoln statue in Ashmore? That is all for Illinois history. See you next time. You can get a Moonshine Burger Monday through Sunday from 8 o'clock to 
Roy Lee and Helen Tuttle bought it in 1982. The moonshine store actually started in 1889 when a man named William St. Mark's opened the original store north of the present day location. A fire in 1911 destroyed the original building. In 2003, CBS Sunday morning visited the store, attracting a big boom to their business. The most burgers they sold before the CBS report was 287 burgers. Because of the CBS report, the numbers has gone up greatly. The record is now 1,908 burgers on the annual Moonshine lunch run. They also have an annual motor motorcycle rally. Uh, thank you for listening to the Illinois History News Broadcast. <laughs>
crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have for you today. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to Illinois History News. I am Cole, and this is Megan. Today in Mattoon, there was a mysterious figure seen dressed in black. People are believing he is the one responsible for the gas attacks in Mattoon. Victims are saying it smelled sweet and you couldn't move, and finally you were uncontrollably sick. That is all we have for you today. <laughs>